This is a production of World Video Bible School. To God be the glory. Have you ever told a lie? I suspect every one of us would have to answer yes to that question at least once, probably many times we've done that. You know, lying is a subject that's almost universal in nature, and we have a tendency to classify lies. You know, some lies we think of as, as big lies, and others we think of as insignificant. What I want to talk about for the next several minutes is the question, what does God really think about lying? Several years ago, I was invited to speak in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and the topic they assigned me was the daily challenge to be truthful. What do you think about that? Do you really think it's a daily challenge to be truthful? You know, there are many things that I face in life that are challenges, but they're not necessarily daily ones. What do you think about this? I would say that it definitely is. In fact, I read a study some years ago that indicated that the average person lies 25 times a day. Now, when I first read that, I thought, how can that be? That can't be right. But then I began to think about some of the many situations in which people lie. You know, maybe you've had a long day at work and you come home and you're tired and you sit down and you're going to relax and have your supper and visit with your family and the telephone rings. And a member of your family answers the phone and of course it's for you and it's a telemarketer. What do you say? You know, it's so easy to say, just tell them I'm not here. And sometimes before we even think about it, we've said something like that. You know, if you start adding up incidents like that, yeah, maybe it's the case that the average person does lie 25 times a day. Now, hopefully that's not a Christian, but, but the average person. Now, according to one poll, the majority of people interviewed said that they have lied and would lie again, number one, to protect themselves, number two, to keep themselves from hurting someone else's feelings. You know, personally, it would hurt my feelings more to know that I'd been lied to. You know, I can remember one occasion in which I had preached a sermon, and afterwards I asked some friends of mine what they thought about it. And one of them said, well, I didn't think it was very good. The, the introduction was really a distraction. And at first it kind of hurt my feelings, but then I thought, you know, thanks, that, that, that's a, a, a real answer. A dishonest answer wouldn't have helped me a bit, but, but that was real constructive criticism. Well, people say that they lie to protect themselves, to keep from hurting other people's feelings. Number three, they lie to get out of trouble. Now, one writer has defined a lie as a coward's way of getting out of trouble. And I think that's a good definition because it takes moral fiber, it takes courage, it takes backbone to tell the truth. Now, what do you think that this poll tells us? It tells us that most people don't have a problem with lying. Or maybe I should say most people do have a problem with lying. Now, how about this question? At what age do you think lying becomes a problem for people? You know, I asked this question one time to a group of people and someone in the audience shouted from the back. They said, as soon as they learn to talk. And I guess that's about right. It's probably one of the first sins that a young person commits in his life. A child gets a bad mark on his report card and he lies about it. You know, a child gets caught doing something wrong and, and he lies to avoid getting in trouble. And it certainly doesn't stop with children. Adults lie all the way up to our highest officials in the government. There's a problem with lying. And probably all of us can call to mind images of government officials lying and committing perjury to keep themselves out of trouble. But you know, lying is one of those sins that we think of as, as not that big a deal. And we think, ah, oh, what's it going to hurt? Now, with that thought in mind, I want to start our study in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. Now, this is what the text says. These six things does the Lord hate. Yes, seven are an abomination to Him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. I want you to notice that in this short list of seven things that God hates, two things that are mentioned involve lying, a lying tongue and a false witness that speaks lies. Two of the seven things that God despises involve lying. Now, on our human scale, lying doesn't rank high up there. But what about on God's scale? 
What about on, on the centimeter if there were such a thing? God says, here are seven things I despise that are an abomination, that are particularly repulsive in my sight, and lying is one of them. In fact, we can say lying is two of them. Now friends, that being the case, if we're going to be right, we're going to have to change the way that we look at things. We're going to have to start looking at this the way that God looks at it. Now, let's define lying. Webster's defines lying this way, to utter falsehood with an intention to deceive, to cause an incorrect impression, to present a misleading appearance. Now, in light of that definition, let me ask you this question. Can a person lie without actually saying the words? Can they lie without actually saying those words? Sometimes people will bend over backwards to lead someone to believe something that's not true, but they don't actually say the words, and so they'll say, well, I didn't tell a lie. You know, sometimes in court people play these little games, and, and that's why they have to meet with their lawyer before they go to court to testify, so that they'll know how to give a false impression without perjuring themselves. It's, it's how to tell a lie without actually saying the words. But you know, it's still a lie. Essentially, we mean this. You cause someone to believe something that is not true, and you do it intentionally. Now, we're not talking about a mistake. We all do that. That's beyond our control. We're talking about intentionally deceiving someone. Now, as we think about the subject of lying, the first thing I want us to consider is the subject of God and lying. And the first point I want us to notice is the fact that God cannot lie. It is impossible for Him to do it. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2 says about the Christian's eternal life, God that cannot lie promised it before the world began. Now what does that mean? It means that when God says something, we can absolutely count on it because He will not and indeed cannot lie. When God promises eternal life to the faithful, we can count on the fact that it's going to happen. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8, the Bible says, Beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now what does that mean? In the context of 2 Peter chapter 3, it has been prophesied that in the, the latter days, some people would deny that there's going to be a judgment day. They don't think the Lord's coming back. And their reasoning is, it's been thousands of years and nothing has happened. It's not going to happen. But then the text says, that with the Lord, a thousand years is as a day. Now the point is that God's promise is true whether He made it yesterday or whether He made it thousands of years ago or millions of years ago. Now why is that? Because God cannot lie. Ladies and gentlemen, every promise in the Bible will come to pass. When God promises eternal life to the faithful, it will come to pass. When He promises eternal punishment to the wicked, that too will come to pass. You know, occasionally I've heard a member of the church make a comment at the passing of a non-Christian loved one. They'll say something like this, I know he wasn't a Christian, but he was a good person. Maybe God will save him anyway. You know what? It can't happen. It's impossible. And you know why? Because God cannot lie. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says that on the day of judgment, Christ will come in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God, and listen to this, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If a person has not obeyed the gospel, he will not be saved. If, if he were, if God were to save him, then God would be a liar. And that's our first point. God cannot lie. Secondly, I want us to notice that God hates lying. Not only can He not do it, He hates it. Proverbs 6 and verse 17 says that lying is an abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 12 and verse 22 says, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are His delight. And so secondly, God hates lying. He cannot do it. He hates it. Thirdly, lying is contrary to the nature of God Himself. Now what do I mean by that? What is the nature of God? Well, the Bible says that God is truth. When Christ walked on this earth, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, John 14, 6. Now in addition to that, His Word is truth. The psalmist wrote, For the Word of the Lord is right, and all His works are done in truth. Psalm 33, 4. John wrote, Sanctify them through Thy truth, Thy Word is truth truth, John 17, 17. Psalm 31 and verse 5 calls God the God of truth. God cannot lie. He hates lying. 
It is contrary to His nature. And fourthly, God forbids His children to lie. Under the old law, Leviticus 19 and verse 11, the Bible says, You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. The Ten Commandments said, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, Exodus 20 and verse 16. In the New Testament, included in the list with the cowardly and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the sexually immoral sorcerers and idolaters, we find the words, all liars. The text says that these people shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, Revelation 21, 8. Now, as we think about God and lying, of course, just the opposite of God is Satan, of whom the Bible says, is the father of lies. John 8, 44 says about Satan that he was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, we've talked about God and lying. Now, I want to change gears for just a minute and talk about man and lying. Proverbs 13, 5 says, a righteous man hates lying. Now, we mentioned a moment ago, John 8, 44 states that Satan is the father of the lie. I heard someone say on one occasion that a man is never more like the devil than when he's telling a lie. You think that's a true statement? In John 8, when those Jews were lying, Jesus said, you're just like your father. You're of the devil. And lying is perhaps one of the most common of all sins. I mentioned that the average person lies 25 times a day. Can you think of any other sin that's committed that many times in a day? I asked an audience one time if they could think of any other sin that a person commits 25 times a day. I said that I could not. Someone spoke up from the back and said, lusting. And I thought, well, I suppose that may be right. But you have to admit that lying would have to be near the top uh, of the list when it comes to frequency. Because lying is a sin that plagues everyone from the very young to the very old. And it's a sin that I suppose every man who has ever lived any length of time on this earth has committed. But lying seems to be a bigger problem for some folks than for others. Some people have reached the point that lying is not a trap that they fall into sometimes. It's rather a way of life. I've occasionally heard it said that a habitual liar will tell a lie when the truth would be easier. And I've heard it said about some people, how do you know when this person is lying? And the answer is, when his lips are moving, right? You've maybe known someone like that. Well, a question that we might ask is this, why? Why do men lie? If I were to ask you that question, how would you answer it? Someone might say, well, men lie, people lie to get gain. And certainly that's true. A person might lie on his taxes in order to keep more of his money. When I lived in Alabama, I saw a pickup truck on the side of the road with a for sale sign on it, and I was in the market for a pickup truck, and so I stopped, and, and after looking at it, I decided I wanted to buy the truck. I, I got the number and I called the owner. And so we went to a notary to fill out the bill of sale and to have it notarized. And as the man was filling out the bill of sale, he asked, would you like for me to write that you paid $2,000 for the truck instead of $3,000? And I was a little bit puzzled, and I said, are you gonna sell it to me for $2,000? And he said, no, no, I, I just thought that if I wrote a smaller amount, it would save you some money when you go to pay your taxes on it. You see, he was offering to lie. He was offering to falsify the paperwork in order to save me some money. People frequently lie to get gain. You know, a salesman might lie to a customer about a product in order to make a sale. You think that's ever happened before? And somebody might say, well, that's just business. You know, you can't make a living in the car business if you don't fudge the truth a little bit. Well, friends, if that's a true statement, then you'd better get out of the car business because you can't go to heaven like that. You know, a man looking for a job might lie to his potential employer in order to get hired. He might lie, exaggerate his credentials. Someone might lie to his, his boss calling in and claiming to be sick when he's not really sick. In actuality, he just wants to take the day off, and so he lies. And people brag about that sort of thing. A few years ago, there was a country music song, and it, uh, I think it was entitled, I Don't Have to Be Me Till Monday. And in the song, the artist says, I called in sick to work. No, my back don't really hurt. And his plan is to go out and have fun and, and to party. You know, that sort of thing is very common and in many ways is an accepted sin in our society. But you know, Proverbs 21 and verse 6 says, getting treasures by a lying tongue is the fleeting fantasy of those who seek death. 
In other words, those who get gain by lying are seeking eternal death. They'll spend their eternity in hell because they lied in order to get treasures now. Now, another reason why people might lie is to keep themselves out of trouble. Now, we alluded to this earlier. We, we see this with children caught with their hand in the cookie jar. We see this with adults who might lie to a police officer. You know, they're stopped for speeding or some traffic violation, and they might deny it altogether. Or they might concoct some lie. I'm late to pick up my children from school, or I'm on the way to the hospital. A million reasons that they may think of to avoid telling the truth to get themselves out of trouble. And again, all the way up to high government officials. We see them lying before Congress to avoid punishment for their actions, and they play these word games, semantics, to, to try to turn a lie into something other than a lie. In fact, some people will lie for seemingly any reason. Sometimes people will lie to avoid hurting someone else's feelings. And what do you think about that? Can you imagine that our Lord did that? You know, to many people, that type of lie just wouldn't be that big a deal. It's one of those sins that we accept. In fact, we've come up with the term, the little white lie. It's small, it's white, it's pure, it's innocent, it doesn't hurt anybody, and in fact, it might spare someone some pain. You know, I love to watch the Andy Griffith Show. It's my favorite show. It's a great show, but if you've seen it many times, you know that Barney is always messing up something, and Andy frequently lies to spare his feelings. Well, our society has gotten to the point that we even think that that's admirable. It's honorable because, after all, you're doing it because you care about the person. You know, we need to realize that lying is wrong. It's a transgression of the law of God. And we must not allow ourselves to measure sin by how much damage it does or does not do on this earth. The very first sermon that I ever preached was entitled, Little Things. I think I still have an old cassette tape of it, but it went through a list of things that people generally consider to be little sins. But the ultimate point of the lesson was that any sin can cause a man to be lost. And in light of that, none of them are little. And also, you know what happens with a lie? You know what the nature of a lie is? You tell one lie, and it grows, and it leads to another. Somebody said, if you never tell a lie, you never have to remember what you said. I think that's a good statement. Well, as we think about man and lying, we need to realize that lying is very costly. Lying really hurts people. You know, there's an old story about a little boy who had a problem telling lies, and so his daddy wanted to teach him a lesson. And so he got a brand new piece of wood, and he drove ten nails into this piece of wood. And he called his son, and he said, Son, you've recently told ten lies. I want you to go back, and I want you to fix them. I want you to correct them. And as you fix each lie, we'll remove a nail from the piece of wood. And so the boy set about to fix all of his lies. When he finished, and, and the tenth nail was removed, the boy's daddy said, Well, how does it look? The boy responded, Well, the, the nails are gone. But the scars are still there. The scars are still in the wood. And the father said, now you've learned the lesson. Lying does damage that is sometimes impossible to correct. It hurts feelings, and it scars reputations. I'm familiar with an incident that took place several years ago. A young girl in a small town high school made an accusation against one of the male teachers, an accusation of a sexual nature. Well, in this small town, the teacher's reputation was destroyed. It did tremendous damage to his family. Finally, the man moved away, and he found another job in another place. Some time later, the girl came forward, and she said, I lied. I made it up. It never really happened. Did that fix the problem? Did her confession undo the damage? Of course, we know that it did not. Lying can hurt other people. Now, next, not only can lying hurt other people, but it can destroy your own reputation. Proverbs 22 and verse 1 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. The loss of your good name is a tremendous loss indeed. And a surefire way to lose your good name is to become a liar. Few people have respect for a liar, but a man who will tell the truth is respected just about anywhere. Have you ever heard the expression, A man is only as good as his word? You know, there are some people that I've known through the years of whom it could be said, if so-and-so gave you his word, you can count on it because his word is as good as gold. Friends, that is a great treasure when people think of you in that way. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Years ago, 
I decided that I was never going to tell another lie. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that that has not always been an easy goal to live up to, and there have been times that telling a lie seems like it would have been so much easier than telling the truth, and sometimes I have slipped. But you know, my reputation and my commitment to the Lord means more to me than that brief gain that can come by lying. And when you as a Christian reach the point that people can come to you and know that you will tell them the truth no matter what, whether it's pleasant or whether it's not, you have a valuable treasure indeed. Lying can hurt other people, it can destroy your reputation, and it can hurt the church. You know, if a man lives a doctrinally correct life, but not a morally correct life, he's living an inconsistent life. If you have a man who will fight for the truth on baptism, and he will defend the one church of the New Testament, but in his day-to-day -day life he tells lies, what do you think that does to the church? I suppose few things harm the Lord's church more than a man who claims to be a Christian and then doesn't live like one. Now, as we talk about lying hurting a man, there have even been times in history when lying has cost a man his very life. In 1 Kings 13, we have the account of the young prophet who was sent to prophesy against King Jeroboam. And as he faithfully carried out his duty, God told him, after you prophesy against the king, return home. But he said, don't stop along the way for food, and do not return the way that you came. Well, you remember the story. An older prophet came to him and said, come home with me and eat. He said, it will be all right. An angel said for me to tell you this. But then 1 Kings 13, 18 adds these words but he lied unto him. And you remember the story. The young prophet agreed. He went home with the older prophet, and as a result, the Lord punished him by death. Now, in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 5, the Lord showed his disdain for lying when a man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira lied about a piece of property that they had sold. They said that they were giving all of the profit to the church, but in reality, they kept back part of it for themselves. And they may have thought, it's no big deal. I mean, we gave the money to help the work of the Lord, and we only lied about the percentage, and it didn't hurt anyone, right? You know, that's the way we think, isn't it? But the Lord made a powerful statement about how He felt about lying when they were both struck dead. But here's the most important point. Lying can cost a man his soul. Proverbs 21, 6 says that a lying tongue is a characteristic of them that seek death. Revelation 21.8 says that all liars shall have their part in the second death, in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. In 2 Thessalonians 2.12, the Bible teaches that believing a lie can cost men their souls. And so you see, this sin of lying that we think is so insignificant, that we call little and white, can cause me to lose my most valuable possession, my immortal, my eternal soul, and it can cause me to burn eternally in a devil's hell. Now, concerning God and lying, God cannot lie. He hates lying. He forbids His children to do it. It's contrary to His very nature, but the devil is the father of it. Like one man said, perhaps a man is never more like the devil than when he's telling a lie. Now, concerning man and lying, lying can hurt other people. It can destroy a man's reputation. It can do untold damage to the church. It has cost men their lives, and most importantly, it can cost me my soul. Proverbs 12 and verse 22 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are His delight.